What's the word, y'all? NBA Finals Game 1. I'm broken, baby. Shout out to my guy, Reese Made It, for the, for the fire, Devin Booker T. Three games away. I know, I know, I know. I'm supposed to be unbiased around here, but I'm excited, man. I don't want it to be just three games away, by the way. I do want a long and productive season or series. But, hey, three games away for the Phoenix Suns, bro. And today was a good game. Though it wasn't necessarily a, a crazy close one, the Bucs had their couple runs in there to cut it down to seven, eight. But who stepped on the necks of the team? Christopher Emmanuel Paul. Who stepped on the necks of the Bucs? DeAndre Aiden. Who stepped on the necks of the Bucs? Injuries. Injuries did too. Um, because though Giannis did play in this game and had his moments in this game, obviously not 100%. He only attempted 11 shots. He shot, he shot more free throws um, than actual shots. He was more playing the decoy role. I mean, if you look at his final stat line, 20 points, 17 rebounds, 4 assists. But the 11 shot, he wasn't the, the dominant Giannis that we've seen for this entire run. And obviously, you can tell it was the knee. He was limping up court a few times where he was giving the ball off and like, hey, y'all do y'all thing. I'm gassed. I think it's been over a week since the last time he actually played like actual NBA basketball. And this is a guy that for his entire career, uh, leading up into this year at least, where he was never a guy that was going to give you 40 minutes a game because he's playing so hard on the offensive side of the ball. He's a bulldozer, bulldozer, bulldozer. He doesn't have the lungs to play heavy, heavy minutes. And you take a whole week away from productive basketball and of course he is gassed out of this world and he can't bulldoze it to the lane like he normally does that's that and they also play some amazing defense on him today man the Phoenix Suns had a scheme and they tried to basically send the whole team at him anytime they got close to the rim there are screenshots I'm pretty sure people get screenshots where Giannis has the ball within the three or four feet of the rim and there's four jerseys around him from the Phoenix Suns like bro you're not getting a look and even within that, the first half, first quarter or so, he looked as dominant as ever. Like, the knee wasn't bothering him. He got the chase down block on Mikel Bridges. He's dunking. He's doing everything in his power to keep his team in the game, but he didn't really have it. For the Milwaukee Bucks, the, the others didn't perform. Chris Middleton had an okay stat line. He had 29 points per game, or 29 points this game. Had a couple moments where he hit a couple in a row, and it felt like he was very productive. Uh, Drew Holiday continues to do this thing where if Giannis is not playing, he can be super effective, but when Giannis is playing, he struggles offensively, and they didn't get the production from Bobby Portis that you've seen. Um, you didn't get production from Brent Forbes, who they tried to play a, a decent amount of because they need shooting. This team, coming into this series, was shooting 30% from the th free throw line as a team. I mean, they shot 44, which is great in comparison but they had to run a lot of Brent Forbes they had to run 10 minutes of Jeff Teague and at the end of the day those aren't two players that you would normally run in the NBA finals this is game one though uh typically in a game number one teams rotations are eight nine deep and as we get deeper into the series people get cut off cut off because it matters more the Dante DiVincenzo injury is super significant you know of course Giannis's injury is significant but Dante DiVincenzo's Injury is significant because if Dante DiVincenzo is here and he's healthy and he's playing, Brent Forbes doesn't touch the floor. Jeff Teague doesn't touch the floor. And a lot of those minutes from Pat Connaughton maybe get cut down. He wasn't terrible. He wasn't good either. And Dante DiVincenzo does that. He throws an extra defender for some of those perimeter guys that they would normally get. Um, but this series is very far from over. I'm going to talk about the Suns for sure. But this series is very far from over because I saw my guy Taz Mellis tweet this and I didn't even really think about it. Uh, the Milwaukee Bucks are... One and four, or one and three out of the four game fours they played this series or this season on the road to the finals. And the one game that they did win was an overtime game in Milwaukee. That was a Jimmy Butler game tire. Yeah. Is that the last highlight of Jimmy Butler's uh, season? Yeah, probably. So this is not a team that comes out and be like, hey, we on y'all butts in game number one. They take some time, they do some adjustments, and I think they have some adjustments to do because on my podcast this morning, one of the things I was saying is the key, one of the key factors to the series, obviously health again, but like the pick and roll defense with the Milwaukee Bucks, because early in the last series against um, Trey Young and them, they were drop coverage, drop coverage, drop coverage, and then Trey Young dropped 40. And as the series went on, they started to hedge a little bit more. They started to switch. I, I saw Brooke Lopez guard and Trey Young a bunch at the end of this series because they changed their defensive scheme and, and, Devin Booker and Chris Paul, as good as Trey Young is in the pick and roll, these are guys that are just as good or even better. We're talking about Chris Paul. He might be the greatest pick and roll player of all time. So I was saying that the X factor is what Bud decides to do on the pick and roll. And his goal was, hey, if Brooke Lopez is in the game, drop coverage. If Bobby Portis is in the game, we trust Bobby Portis on the perimeter a little bit more than Brooke Lopez. We can switch those things. And boy, did they see that switch. And Chris Paul, 
And Devin Booker were like, yeah, we'll take that. And Bobby didn't necessarily play terrible, terrible defense. But when you got two of the greatest pick and roll isolation players in the league, it made him look real bad. A couple of them plays was objectively bad. But he played some really solid defense on some Devin Booker moves. And Devin Booker just rose up and shot over him. They also picked out Brent Forbes. <laughs> As any good team would do in a situation like this, who is the weakest link on the court? It's obviously Brent Forbes. So let's go at Brent Forbes with Devin. Let's go at Brent Forbes with with um with CP. And they did that and did that and did that. And Brent Forbes hit a couple shots for them. But when he is a liability on the defensive side of the ball and he's giving up this many points, it ain't necessarily a good thing for him to be on the court. So I would expect for game number two, it's either two things. Here's one of the two things. Either he's going to come out in game two and he's going to hit four threes in a row like he did in that one game against I forget who, or he won't play. Or he'll play instead of 12 minutes, he'll play two minutes, and then Bud's like, okay, short leash, we can't really do that. Um, man, what a game from Chris Paul, bro. First ever finals appearance from my point guard, and boy, did he show up. First quarter, he didn't really do much. First half, really, he didn't really do much. Third quarter comes around. All right, I'm done playing at the pace and let my other guys get involved. It's my time to shine. And he did that. Step back. Uh, and one threes where he twisting his ankle. And I'm just, I'm like, bro, no. This ain't the this ain't the time. And then later in the game, he hurt his hand. I'm like, bro, this is not the time, Chris. This is not the time for this. But what a great performance from him. Devin Booker didn't necessarily shoot the ball well. Um, I'm looking at eight for 21, one for eight for three. But he was hella aggressive when it came to to get into the free throw line. And I saw some people, and these these people don't represent the entire fan base at all. But I saw a, a few Bucks fans tweet at me like, "Yo, Kenny, look at the disparity in the free throws." And it's 26 to 16. And throughout this game, it wasn't really that close. At one point, it was super super lopsided until Giannis drew a bunch of fouls in the fourth quarter. Um, and what I would just say to that, it's not that it was rigged. The Suns legitimately try to get to the basket at any time they can. And it felt like Chris Middleton, Drew Holiday's of the, of the team were, were settling. If it wasn't Giannis bulldozing his way to the paint, they didn't really have much paint production other than, you know, Brooke Lopez had a couple shots, you know. Um, but this team is dramatically different schemes when Giannis plays and when Giannis doesn't. And when Giannis plays, it's Giannis as the aggressor, right? I think I heard somewhere earlier... Um, when I was listening to a podcast, I think it was Zach Lowe's podcast, I could be mistaken. And if I was savvy enough, I would look this up while I'm talking about it. But they were saying that these are the two lowest free throw attempting teams in the entire league. It's Giannis carrying the Bucks when it comes to free throw attempts. And then it's like Devin Booker because, yeah, hey, DeAndre ain't had an amazing game. We're going to talk about that. But um, six shot, oh, six free throw attempts is really good for DeAndre Aiden considering he be having games with zero from zero from the free throw line. But, hey, if... if Giannis wasn't making it to the paint. Nobody else was really trying to be aggressive, you know? There may be a few plays that were missed fouls, but that's just in the, in the scheme of basketball. It's going to happen that way. Um, but let's talk about DeAndre Ayton. Graphic pops up on my screen. I had to screenshot that thing. Hold on. I got to go to my Twitter. I had to screenshot that thing. The, I think it was like the last player to have a 2015 game going with rebounds in the NBA Finals was like Tim Dunk. Let me see. Here it is. First player with 15 points and 15 rebounds in a Finals debut since Tim Duncan in 99, DeAndre Aiden completely dominated this game. Completely dominated this game. And all of the great centers that were in the finals or in the playoffs this year, he stands above all. He stands above all. And, and what a performance from him. Chris Paul did him so dirty because the last shot of the game... It's like five seconds left or so. Chris Paul literally just steals the rebound out of DeAndre Ayton hands, preventing him from setting another record of having a 2020 game. So he had to settle for a 22-19 game. Still great. Still great. Hands were immaculate. No turnovers for DeAndre Ayton today. And you know him. If he's probably not gonna miss. He's probably not gonna not gonna miss. Somebody said, I I'm I'm just looking at my Twitter account here. Y'all know these are off the cuff. I just talk. He, this is from Jake and Hoops. He's the top reply to my tweet. He has worked his way into Bam, Cat, and Rudy discusses behind and beating Jokic this postseason. He's arguably their best player over the last six weeks. Tell me if y'all agree or disagree with Jake and Hoops takes there. I don't think he's too far off. I'm not saying I completely agree. But another tweet that I saw that was very, very um, interesting was a tweet. I'll be screenshotting these tweets because I'll be wanting to talk about these things. It's from Mark Stein. This is only the ninth game Chris Paul has played in the month, and he is uber fresh, especially by the standards of this wild season in the show tonight. 
I didn't really think about that. While the Milwaukee Bucks are banged up and just went to some seven games. Wait, did that go to a seven? Just going to a long series after long series after long series. Chris Paul missed games this, this series. And because of that, he ain't really, he's fresh. He's fresh. The freshest playoff run of Chris Paul's career. That's he, that's coming off an of injury. You know what I'm saying? But that, yes, that, that definitely was a factor in today's game. Definitely was a factor in today's game. I'm excited for this series, man. Like I said, this series is very far from over. The Milwaukee Bucks are a very good team, y'all. I want y'all to realize this. The Milwaukee Bucks, yes, I've said it before, injuries have played a big part in these two teams facing against each other in the finals. That's a fact. There's no disputing that. But the Bucks are a super, super talented team. And if there's anything you can take away from this game, Bucks fans, you could be like, oh, we're straight, we're good. It's the fact that you shot 44% from three today. And I don't know if you've had a single game this series or this whole playoff run that was 44%. The jump shot was falling. You need Giannis to get a couple more days of health because him going into this being doubtful to questionable to another questionable to we good is obviously he's not there. He's not there just yet. So maybe these next two days, and I think they get a three day break in between that. So it might take a few games for Giannis to get healthy. But the three point shots were hitting tonight and it's one thing you can hang your hats on. Coach Bud has to figure out what to do about the pick and roll coverage because you saw he tried a little bit of, of both with Brooke Lopez. We're, sit, we're sitting down and we're, we're not doing anything. And then with Bobby Porter's, we switched and, and he got ice. I don't think the switch is a terrible idea. I legitimately think the Suns made some really, really tough shots today. I don't know if I mentioned the two names of the Cams. Um, Cameron Johnson, Cameron Payne, both looking amazing. No Dario Sarge because he got injured very early on. But it didn't matter. Definitely didn't matter because DeAndre Aiden was so dominant that they didn't need to really bring him out of the game at any point. You know? Um... You can't go small against the I mean, you can go small against the Suns, but the Suns are not a team that's going to be reactionary and say, we have to go small too because Aiden is so versatile. Wow, I'm excited for this one. Mikel Bridge is some big time shots. He got his stuff glassed earlier, but it didn't matter. Scoreboard, Giannis. <laughs> Scoreboard. Um, yeah, I'm excited for game number two. Hopefully, I can pull up to game number three in Milwaukee. I think that's on a Sunday. I might be able to pull a trigger. And they're expensive. It's like a grand per seat unless you want to sit in the 300s and not. If I'm going to sit in the 300s, I'll just stay at the crib. So we'll see. Uh, let me know what you think about game one. Are you a guy that said it's over? I've seen a lot of people, Suns and Four guy, is signing autographs and doing meetups and... <sighs> really? Hypothetically speaking. What? Hypothetically speaking. Um, If I were to... If I were to... Sell autographed pictures of myself. Would you buy? And at what price? At what price? Because Sons and Four Guy is selling him. And people are buying. I think I got a little bit more clout than Sons and Four Guy. But Sons and Four Guy did talk to Devin Booker. I've never done that. Book, hit me up, baby. Come on to the show. I also shot my shot at Isaiah Thomas today. Ratioed his tweet asking him to come on called game and he didn't respond. So... I, sh I shoot, you know what I'm saying? I might shoot 10%, but I'm going to keep shooting. So D-Book, Isaiah Thomas, anybody in between, hit a brother up. Come on to the show. Uh, speaking of that show, the actual hero show while we're here at the end of the episode, leave a like, subscribe if you want to leave here. Um, we're taking a brief hiatus on the actual called game episode, so I don't want people waiting up on Wednesdays thinking you're going to get a show because you're not. Um, we're trying to re recalibrate, try to figure some things out, try to get people booked. Because I don't know if you know this, the last month has been called Game Lives, which is basically a way of saying, us saying, we didn't book anybody this week. It's been a struggle. Independent, you know what I'm saying? It's hard It's hard to hit people up. Some of my friends are still in season. Shout out to Mikhail Bridges. So, um, yeah. I, I'm, I'll probably upload tomorrow. There's some stuff on my mind dealing with the NBA. I feel like I should upload tomorrow, so I'll see you then.